Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss a very specific type of an example of a fuel cell. And so we're going to focus on a PEM or a proton exchange membrane fuel cell. So let's back up just a second and review what a fuel cell is. A fuel cell is an electrochemical cell that converts chemical energy to electrical energy, but for a fuel cell specifically, we are always supplying a source of fuel. You have to supply it. If you do not supply a source of fuel, this cell will not work. Now, we already know, and hopefully you can recall this, that usually we are also supplying an oxidant, which is usually oxygen gas. So now in this video, what we're going to focus on is a proton exchange membrane. So this is a very, very specific type of fuel cell and most people just write PEM and what I want you to remember throughout this whole thing is that we're using work energy so organized molecular motion not heat energy not unorganized molecular motion work energy to drive this process in order to convert chemical to electrical so I want to start off by just looking at the left side okay so what we see here is we have our hydrogen gas coming in it's going in on this side, then it goes and it reacts, it goes through, it decomposes, it breaks apart into H plus using a catalyst, okay, this is a catalytic process, and then at the very bottom, what we see is we're spitting out excess H2 back out. So any H2 that wasn't reacted goes back out and then it cycles right back in eventually, okay, it takes a little bit. This side is your anode side. So we know this is where the oxidation is occurring. So right up here, we can see at the very top, we have our anode and we have our electrons traveling from the anode directly to the cathode. So for this example, the PEM fuel cell, the way it's drawn here, our cathode is going to be on our right side. This is our cathode, and that means that we know that we're going to have the reduction process occur on this side. So now just like on the left side with our right side, we have our oxygen coming in. So we're injecting, we're pumping oxygen into the surface. And then what happens at the very, very bottom is we are able to release H2O gas and any excess oxygen, and that comes right out here out of the bottom, okay? So that is the part of what's going on in the outside. That's the big picture. Now what I want to do is focus on on the inside where we're actually using that proton exchange membrane. Okay, and so what we have here, what I want to focus on is the actual um, magnifying glass, I should say. And so right here in the center, what we see is we have our hydrogen gas coming in. It pumps in this way and it hits the catalyst. Once it hits the catalyst, we're able to break apart our hydrogen gas into our H plus ion. So that's what's going on right here. These are all your H plus ions. They continue through. And then basically what you see is right here at the edge, you have these two red circles. That's your oxygen gas, which we know always comes as a diatomic. It's just sitting there waiting for the H plus. So it comes over there. It it hits the oxygen gas and then eventually what happens is the H plus and the O2 are able to come together and create H2O gas and this process of converting the chemical energy of hydrogen gas and all the way to the electrical energy we are able to harness a lot of energy this is an unbelievably beautiful process just because we're using hydrogen as a source of fuel so now let's summarize this. Let's put it all together here. And the first thing I want to do is identify what our two pieces are that we're comparing, I should say. So let's compare a fuel cell from a very, very simple internal combustion engine. So a classic one, internal combustion engine. So the first thing I want to do is talk about efficiency, okay? So efficiency is something we've discussed to great lengths, especially when we looked at combustion reactions. So if we look at an internal combustion reaction, what you can recall is that it had an efficiency of anywhere between 20 to 30 percent. That is because we're using heat energy. We're constantly losing energy to heat, to sound. It's going everywhere. It's unorganized. This is an inefficient process of converting chemical to electrical. However, in a fuel cell, it's a much, much higher efficiency of 45 to 55 percent efficient depending on the specific type of fuel cell in your membrane and everything but at 45 to 55 regardless of your type of membrane a fuel cell is significantly more efficient than an internal combustion engine and that is because you are using work organized molecular motion now the speed, how quickly does this happen? Well, unfortunately the fuel cell is slower, it's definitely a slower process, where I would say the internal combustion engine is fast, okay? We've got that down, it is a very quick transfer of energy. Now, is there a flame? Okay, is there a flame? That's usually a question that's asked because that immediately eliminates a fuel cell from certain parts. Is there a flame? For a fuel cell, no fire. For an internal combustion, yes, there's absolutely a fire, there has to be a flame. 
Last thing, are there any gases emitted? Well, for a fuel cell, none. No emissions come out. We're not releasing carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nothing. We're not releasing anything. For the gases, for an internal combustion engine, we've already reviewed this to great lengths. We know carbon dioxide, we know NO2 comes out, we know CO comes out, and a lot of other pieces that I don't have time to go into. So if we're looking at just the fuel cell and just the internal combustion engine, which is better overall? Okay, better in terms of efficiency, better in terms of our planet, better in terms of the potential energy stored within the bonds of the fuel source, which is better overall, fuel cell or internal combustion engine? Go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did, but if you didn't, that's completely okay. Basically, the overall, the best overall one for us is definitely a fuel cell. And if we compare efficiency, if we compare whether or not there's a flame, if we talk about greenhouse emissions and global warming, the fuel cell is definitely the best overall, okay? And that 100% has to do with the fact that a fuel cell uses work in terms of work and en energy, whereas an internal combustion energy def engine definitely uses heat as a source of energy. So we have unorganized, which is heat, very not efficient at all. Then you have a fuel cell which uses work energy, very, very efficient, very, very organized. It is a much better source or much, much better process, okay? Now, are we always stuck with hydrogen? Do we always have to use hydrogen as our source of fuel? Technically, no, we do not have to. We could do something like methanol that has a very, very high hydrogen content and a very low carbon content. And the whole goal of that would be to use a reformer to extract the hydrogen so that at the very, very end of using this system right here, we end up with hydrogen gas that we could then shoot back into our fuel cell. So do we always have to start directly with earth abundant hydrogen? No, we could process hydrogen, but it takes a lot of energy and a lot of work to do this, okay? So now just very, very briefly, because I don't want you to know the nitty gritty of this. Basically what happens, you take methanol or ethanol and you put it into a fuel tank. After that, you go into a vaporizer. The vaporizer is just converting the liquid state to the gaseous state. So we're just going from liquid methanol to gaseous methanol. Then you get to a catalytic conform reformer. So this is actually the process right here where we're converting our methanol to our hydrogen gas. Then what we do is we put it into a cleaner, basically a gas cleaning. And that, the whole point there is to extract any molecules that are not just hydrogen gas or just carbon dioxide. So for example, something like carbon monoxide is extracted, it's pumped back into the catalytic conformer, and then if you look down here, we see that our CO is definitely converted to carbon dioxide. So do we just have to use hydrogen gas? No, we can use other sources of fuel, but it is definitely more challenging and it's more expensive. The highlight though is that there's no hydrogen tank just sitting right there. You don't have to actually have that piece. So that's a nicer component. All right, last question that we're gonna end you with here. What is the biggest drawback, drawback, of a hydrogen or a PEM, proton exchange membrane, fuel cell. What's the biggest drawback, okay? Go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did, and the big answer, the major answer, is that hydrogen gas is extraordinarily explosive, okay? That is the reason why I love blowing up hydrogen balloons. It's one of my favorite things to do, and I love doing it in my outreach programs, but it's dangerous. It's not something you can easily do. So explosive definitely means danger, which is never a good component when you're talking about extracting energy. And when you think about this, you need to keep in the back of your mind that we don't just have tanks of hydrogen gas sitting everywhere ready to just go into a fuel cell. You have to find it, you have to store it, so you have a storage component, and you also have a transportation component. So you have to think about the people who are actually putting these tanks of hydrogen gas into their car, into their truck, and driving it wherever these fuel cells are. So it's extraordinarily dangerous. However, when you get these hydrogen or whatever your fuel source is to the place, so for example, banks airports, um, let's see, what else? Police stations, hospitals, they all use fuel cells. They're all really, really good sources of fuel cells because you cannot have an internal combustion engine inside of a bank or inside of an airport. You just cannot have that. So it's a very good alternative source of energy. It's very, very efficient, and I love, love, love fuel cells. Um, I think that's evident, though, right? Have a great week. Take care of yourself. Drink water.